Hi right, guys, Hatch Comic again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Formal telling all last night on what's happening going into next season, revealing that the CDL opportunities we thought were on the table actually were, and Formal could well have been a CDL franchise player for the upcoming season if that's what he wanted to be. Turns out though, he doesn't want to go out as we saw last night on a second place streak of finishes. He wants to run it back, but if he is going to do so in Halo, it's going to be with a more competitive team. Rumours emerging that Optic are making some serious changes to the Halo roster. Is Formal getting the keys? over there to build what he wants with a potential optic phase combo for next year to take down SSG. Very much into to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. First of all, here was Krim at Road Atlantic yesterday. And as I mentioned, I was like, does Krim know that he's going to get back for this optic legacy match happening tonight, of course? And uh, Krim says, on my way back tonight, as in yesterday. So he's going to be there in time. No problems about it. So yesterday, optic kind of confirmed some of the timings for this. I'm sure some of you guys are going to go and attend. I believe if it's even like as last minute as this, if you guys are just hearing about this and you happen to live locally, I think you can still go. There's some tickets still available. The meet and greet started at 3.30 p.m. I think, so I'm guessing this is local Dallas time, six hours behind uh, BST, and we've got all the Optic boys in the Dynasty, basically, and then after that they've got the content creators. They're doing a couple of meet and greets and then the matches begin. The show begins 5.30, matches start at 6. Now, what game are they going to play? It's still not been confirmed yet, although Formal may have leaked it, because he tweeted this yesterday. Oh, how I've missed Black Ops 2. Optic Dynasty of Back Tomorrow, he says. So, look, of the games they could have chosen, I think Black Ops 2 is certainly up there. I'm not going to complain. Obviously, look, you guys know the game that I love them to have played, but whatever. If they're doing Black Ops 2, that's okay. We didn't get a Black Ops 2 throwback this offseason as they've done a couple of times over the last few years that Skump's team has generally won and Hitch and the guys have thrown. Didn't happen this offseason, so I'm guessing some sort of Black Ops 2 content is fair. If it is Black Ops 2, assuming it is, I'd like to see them play across a couple of games it'd be interesting if they did like a best of five or a best of seven best of nine I don't know and then play like two maps on different COD titles it'd be entertaining but um look doing it this way who are favorites the current Optic Texas team of Shotzi, Dashi, Pred and Kenny or the Optic Dynasty of Skump, Krim, Formal and Karma right because of course these guys in their prime just won the world championship but Black Ops 2 was a game that's I mean, I'm sure these guys played back in the day, maybe not Shotzi, to be fair, because it came out in, what, 2012? And um, the Optic Dynasty were not the dynasty at the time, but Karma was, like, the best player in the game on Black Ops 2. Skump wasn't far behind. Krim obviously was just coming into the scene really at that point and Formal also wasn't competing then he was over in the Halo world so um, but then again he obviously has played a bit of it in hindsight so in Twitter your thoughts on the comments who are favoured I think the Optic Dynasty have a great chance to win we'll see this evening I guess this I thought was kind of cool as well with uh, Chino saying to Kenny hey just realised you've won two rings in your COD career one for Nadejot with the Thieves and one for Hex which is um, you know, quite the accomplishment actually in many ways and as Kelly says, yeah, the green and the red rings together are going to look insane when they arrive because, you know, they take some time to get manufactured and all this, right, and then get sent to the players and pretty sure that's how it tends to go anyway. So that's the plan there and Kenny's looking forward to it, of course. Now, let's talk roster stuff. We'll get into the formal thing in a second. Firstly, on the Ravens, Slasher, Gwyn, TJ, Vivid. That is believed to be the team of four. Slasher's going to be the main AR. The other three guys, we don't really know who's running the flex. I would keep Gwyn on the sub. I think he could run a flex well. The issue is when you've got like arguably your most talented player or your best player on the team in Gwyn and he can run an SMG very effectively, you probably want to make him because, you know, that just tends to be the theory that if you've got your best player and he's a sub player, keep him on the sub rather than making adjustments because he's just going to be more impactful there than he would be on another role. That's the theory anyway. So then you've got to figure out, okay, who's going to be the flex? Is it going to be Vivid, who I think could do a pretty good job in that role? But again, on paper, Vivid is a very fast, aggressive SMG and a Vivid Gwyn SMG lineup is nice on paper for sure. Vivid, of course, is always going to have his questions because for whatever reason over the last few years, he just keeps on getting dropped. And um, despite how good he seems to be by the eye test when you watch the guy play. So maybe TJ ends up as the flex. I don't know. Mayhem may have a part to play in those decisions. We believe that he's going to join as a former phase back coach, as it was last year, alongside Brian Saint. So Brian Saint is the head coach slash general manager, and then Mayhem's come along as well. So it's interesting that Ravens, you know, fair play. They're signing somebody else to try and help them win. I mean, I like the team they're putting together this season, to be honest. And the idea that they're actually forking out the funds to, you know, have an extra coach coming into the league 
it's a nice sign as well, I suppose. Now, look, I'm still not forgiving Ravens for not running the event that they were trying to run last season and it failed, so um, I'm not going to give them loads of credit. But still, it's nice to see some organisations, even if they might be poverty orgs, they're still at least trying to be competitive, I suppose. But let's talk about the formal thing. We saw some clips last night of him clearly deeply frustrated at the result of the Halo World Championship this year and, of course, the run of second places they have all the way back to last year's Halo World championship grand final but formal obviously recognizes he's played incredibly well he's still playing near enough his peak level he thinks he's playing some of the best halo recently so you know why would you retire at this level especially when he doesn't want to go out on the loss that they have just experienced so formal kind of went through this and said that it's so difficult going through all these second places and he, he definitely doesn't want to do that again i think that's the point that he made that like absolutely he doesn't have it in him to go through that for another year right? like another year of seconds would just be a nightmare so formal's decision was kind of twofold either he forms a team that can win everything or at least try and take down ssg ssg the space station gaming team they won this year's world championship they were the best team and formal definitely played good enough halo to defeat beat them on an individual level but his team overall just wasn't quite good enough of course there were questions when they got rid of APG in the first place whether that was going to be a good idea the reality is it's not like APG has been playing incredibly well or been you know making deep runs in tournaments on his new team so you know the feeling is that maybe that was a reasonable decision it's just SSG in this current meta are a bit too strong of course the bandit as well coming into play over the BR like the battle rifle or whatever the three round burst thing the meta changed somewhat and um, you know the gameplay changed and it just seems like SSG had a better grasp of how to constantly rotate through the objectives better than the other teams did so formal's decision seems to be one of two either retire from Halo and just call it a day or retire from Halo and come to COD, that's potentially an option we'll discuss in a second. Or, of course, stay in Halo, which seems the most likely option, but form a new God Squad. And that's basically what he says in this clip, I'll share them for you guys in just a second. If he is going to play Halo again, he needs a squad I know can win most of the events. So, you know, if you thought last year's Optic team was good, the plan for Optic is to form an absolute God Squad around Formal. At least that's Formal's plan. Whether that's on Optic, I don't know, because... You know, just in general, right, Optic, their esports operations have, I wouldn't say dwindled, right, but, you know, some of the esports they were formerly involved in, not the case any longer, and really it's only, you know, COD and Halo that are left. So whether they even stay around in Halo, is there money to be made in that? Maybe there's a question on that, but I think they probably will. But as Formal says, he did have offers. So, look, he basically said, you have to read between the lines a little bit here, but basically what he says is, he could have gone to the league if he wanted to, he just would have had to sign the deal a while ago. And I mentioned this, like, a while ago now, and we talked about this whole Formal to Los Angeles Thieves stuff, and maybe the offer was from Thieves, I don't know, maybe there were multiple offers, it's a um, bit of a question, but it definitely feels like Formal was given some opportunity to return to the Call of Duty League here. The issue is that he would have had to, as I mentioned at the time, make that decision a while ago go and commit to the decision before the Halo World Championship which was a very difficult thing to do because he didn't know what was going to happen at Halo Champs. So he's made the call not to do so but he also does open the door to the fact that well at the start of the season when some players start to get slams there is going to be a second round of opportunities to get into the league. And then there's like another part of me that like wants to make this on like God Squad in Halo but like dude I, I don't know if Hector's trying to spend that kind of money bro. I, I don't think he is. I don't think he wants to. Like, I don't fucking blame him. That's huge of Halo. I don't think fucking did anything besides just like, drain his bank account and, like, make him think it wasn't worth it. I was just like, fuck. Like, I know, I'm I'm realistic with it. Like, I know that our Halo team was not profiting him. Like, any yeah. I know what the sense. salaries are like. So. Yeah, I can't go through, like, a whole another year of getting second, bro. Like, if I'm going to play Halo again, it's going to have to be with a squad I know is going to, like, win most of the events. Like, I can't do these what-ifs and, like, have to dig into my, like, super bag to try to fucking hard carry an event. Like, I'm fucking almost 30, bro. Shit is hard. I feel like I should still be competing in something. Like, I'm still playing so good. Like, I should, I should try to play something. You know, I don't want to like retire and then like regret retiring. That'd like be even worse. You know, it's tough, man. It's a tough spot to be in. I'm really not sure what I'm gonna do as of like this moment. Now, see, like the COD thing is kind of kind of chalked because I didn't join a roster when I had the chance. That ship's kind of sailed for now. Until people start getting shit on the league, that would be the other like the next opening. All the rosters are pretty much solidified for this year. Um, the game comes out in two weeks, you know. I would have had to have made that decision and joined a team and signed a contract before this uh, this world even happened. Do I do I think I really 
could have. I mean, do I think I would have or could have played a odd spot? Probably, but did I want to? Probably not. Pretty like taxing experience as opposed to Halo, what I've been used to the past few years. Like in Halo, you scream like once a day, 5 p.m. It's kind of chill. We had uh, uh, some some updates to give to everyone here on the on on what Formal's doing. Nobody knows. I don't know. Oh, is, like, is he retiring? Is he, he retiring to play? Well, I don't think. I literally don't think anyone knows. No I don't think. I mean, I don't think. I he think. Knows. I, I I think like like I feel like if I had to guess what he was gonna do before this event, I would have said probably like retire or like maybe go to a different game. But after this event, the way that they lost, like at least if that was him, I would fucking form some some sort. A team and some super team to just win win that who would shit. you who would you uh wait i was gonna ask you who would you replace who would i, I get huh? who would i get but I, you can't pick up anyone say i'm that right and i lost that shit the way i lost got reverse who swept do you didn't win this year right all right it's gonna be a team. obviously like discluding a championship fucking ssg right right, right. it'd be like me renegade uh frosty and fucking i probably put suppress in there who Jeez. it'd be formal the fucking uh who did i say bro? renegade renegade frosty Frosty and Suppress. He's like the, he's like, he got like main slayer of the year. But yeah, I think that, that team would be fucking insane. I'm not gonna lie. So I think it makes sense that teams would have been reaching out to Formal. Of course, it would be difficult from like the Optic side. I'm sure many Optic fans want him to stay with Optic forever. Could they loan him out to another team? Maybe. But then again, if you're like any team in the league that isn't an absolute top team, it seems almost a no-brainer to try and get formal right because either you get like a formal that's close to prime if he's super committed and could be one of the absolute best many arts in the game or if that's not the case you still get a guy with an immense following incredible pedigree and experience of winning championships he's still probably going to be above average even if he's not super committed or whatever and it's still going to be beneficial right so i feel like every team really should be considering formal if he's there and if formal does decide you know what I can't form what I want to do in Halo. Maybe Call of Duty is the way to go again. And he, you know, plays Chals. He plays opening tournaments. December, January, basically after the first event of the season, someone's going to hit up Formal. I can guarantee it if he wants to do it. So um, I think the option is still there. To me, it seems more likely, because as he says, he doesn't want to retire. He's playing too well, basically. So that's what he feels. And he doesn't want to go out on loss as he has done anyway. So I feel like the most likely option is probably that he ends up staying around in Halo and they form a better team. Because as Ronnie then says yesterday, might have to start getting involved with Halo leaks. And, um, you know, there's a theory or maybe Optic are going to replace Formal with Renegade if he retires or something. But, um, yeah. I don't know if that's actually going to be happening anymore because Ronnie then tweets this out implying that there's something major happening and then he drops a bombshell shortly afterwards. So um, if you guys are not familiar with Halo, it's been Formal, Lucid, Trippy and Dead Zone, formerly known I think as Penguin, on the Optic team this most recent season. And the rumour has it that Lucid and Trippy, so Lucid has been considered one of the absolute best players in the game. But, um, you know, he's I think the IGL of the Optic team and there are questions on his like decision making or the way that they approach the game and there's been rumors of a bit of like behind the scenes conflict over there in the optic halo team for some time so maybe it makes sense that possibly Lucid and Formal weren't seeing fully eye to eye and rumor has it that those two guys who I think have been a package deal I think they've been a teammate for some time basically teammate pairing are looking to join a different team and shop off I rebellion trippy talented player this season was a bit up and down and inconsistent so that makes sense and there is an argument to say well you drop trippy you bring in i don't know renegade or something from phase and that's your upgrade but um apparently they might go one step further so this is the space station team bound eco stellar and then legion was brought in and they were the dominant force this season in halo no doubt about it sr was this team and then it was phase and optic really fighting over who was going to be second it was largely speaking optic gaming but um you know phase also came out on top on occasion and that snake bite renegade frosty and royal too so people have just been throwing around what optic might do because can you form a team to beat space station probably you might have to change mentality to some degree and that's the argument that maybe you actually do get rid of lucid despite how controversial that would be and is it likely that formal effectively has the keys yes i mean let's be real here like despite how good lucid and trippy have been for optic formal is optic in many ways so if hex or if the team is deciding that one man is going to be the man to form the roster to be ssg formal is going to be the guy who you say all right who do you want and um let's make it happen so you know that would be the theory that formal dead zone and then maybe two of the guys from phase i mean i would probably say renegade and frosty i mean that would be my pick 
Cup and I'd form a team of Frosty, Renegade, Formal and Dead Zone and um, that would try and be your team of four to beat SSG. That might be the way I would go about it but um, yeah, intrigue your thoughts in the comments below. It would be fascinating to see Frosty as well on Optic. I don't know. I'd be really interested to see it. I think there's going to be some interesting developments here because yeah, it wasn't long ago that it felt like Formal was going to retire as time and Halo was done and now all of a sudden Formal's, you know, kept the fire and he's wanting to go even one step further the next season, potentially with a new God Squad. So very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff as always in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.